Okay, so we're gonna take a real quick look at this launching point assignment specifically. This is on the Enlightenment philosophers. These are gonna be, as a whole, these are gonna be your philosophers that have influenced the formation of the American government. We looked at some of these yesterday in the 3D assignment with Jean Locke, um, Jean-Jacques Rousseau, Montesquieu, Voltaire. We looked at those. We're gonna take a little bit of a deeper dive into John Locke specifically. So, if, as I say, if you haven't watched the video on how to fill out the launching point assignment, go back and watch the other video very quickly. It's not a long one. This is not a complicated um, strategy. So go back, watch it, and then come back to this video. So what we're looking at is how John Locke affected different things. You know, not all of these occurred while he was living, but he had relationships to them. So what we're looking at specifically is his relationship to unalienable rights, the Declaration of Independence, and the legislative process. So how do we find out about his relationship to these things? I'll give you a clue. It's right there. Read the text on the next page. There is about two, just over two, two in a small paragraph, um, pages worth of information here. But take a look through here. This is taking a good dive into Locke's influence on the U.S. Constitution. You know, we see the ideas of natural rights that are found in the U.S. Constitution and the Declaration of Independence. If you were paying attention in the 3D assignment, and especially if you were in class, you remember life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. John Locke is known for stressing the right of man for John or for um, life, liberty, and property. But it was his ideas that led to the specific rights that man has, as far as the US government is concerned, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. If we go down a little bit, it talks about the second treatise. Look at this in detail, this is where most of the information is going to come from. This is where you take a deeper dive into what it was that he meant. You, this is specifically, I'll go ahead and tell you, this is where you're going to see the connections to the legislative process. If we go just past that, you can see, like I said, real short paragraph at the end here. But his idea that there was and needed to be the expansion of the social contract. This was a huge influence on the founding fathers. So I want you, I don't want to tell you too much in this because even if you're in class, we're reading the assignment first. Then we go back and we discuss the things that we picked up and then we pull the information out of this. So I'm not leaving you out on any process that would happen if you were in class. So read the information, then go back through, read it again, paying attention to the relationship to the legislative process, unalienable rights, and the Declaration of Independence. When you figure out what his relationship to these things are, make a text box, type it in this area. You know, if you wind up with more, it's okay. Make your text box a little bit wider, paste around it. Make it a little bit bigger than they think. As long as I can read it, that it's not jumbled and that it's clear. Don't take the annotation tool and scribble all over the page or anything like that but make text boxes, make it so I can read it, and that is what I'm looking for. If you have any questions, send me an email or send me a message on Schoology. Um, same rules as always, if you message me in the middle of the day, uh, the only time I'll respond is during my planning period because I'm teaching other classes. If you message me over the weekend, 
if it's an emergency situation, I'll I'll write you back. But there shouldn't be much to carry you over on the weekend. There shouldn't be any questions there. But if anything comes up, let me know. I'll do my best to get back with you and answer all your questions before the end of the day on Friday.